Peter, I was talking to a gentleman earlier today who calls himself a wealthy investor agent. And he was telling me that right now is the time you need to look into flow throughs, not wait to the end of the year. Is he correct? Absolutely. Yeah. For a couple of reasons. One is you could run out of product where there just isn't any flows available at any price. And secondly, the prices tend to get worse for the investors, the donors uh, later in the year because the issuers and what we call the liquidity providers that take away the risk demand higher margins on their side of the business because they know that they've got the investors, uh, donors uh, over, you know, over the barrel because the end of the tax year is coming. So he's absolutely right. This is a good time consistently after the federal budget till about September Labor Day has always been uh, you know, the, the, the best pricing for investors to buy flow throughs. Now, this gentleman is also a major advocate and is loves the operations over at WCPD. And he also mentioned that there's some changes happening in taxes. So it's another reason if you're planning on collapsing your RRSPs, you want to take advantage of some of these flow through opportunities to call you as soon as possible because you just get too busy by the end of the year. Is that correct? Yeah, what he's talking about is probably alternate minimum tax. So uh, that rule change uh, happened on the budget, but does not come in force until January 2024. And it's going to limit the maximum that high net worth people can buy of this very safe tax reduction strategy. And right now, it's about 40% of your salary, and it's going to go down to 30%. So a lot of clients are buying more uh, this year on purpose, hitting AMT so they can shelter more. Uh, they know their incomes are going to be uh, similar next year. So they're buying, they're overbuying some tax deductions because of this potential tax law change that looks like will come back into uh, it that'll come into law. So we have also been receiving a lot of emails and inquiries having to do with Saskatchewan and some of the critical mineral advantages, investment advantages, and the same for Quebec. Can you give us a bit of an update on what's happening out there with critical minerals? Right. And I do appreciate that's a broad question. Sure, sure. Well, look, I mean, I, I We've never had so much government support in the mining business. I've always stated that we've never really been loved that much. Well, now we are starting to be loved. Uh, we've still got a long way left to go, but uh, people understand there is no path to zero carbon without critical minerals. We need more lithium, cobalt, copper, 10 times more. So what people are talking about is the following. One, the federal government came out, as we all know, last April 2022 with this phenomenal increase in, in federal credits of 30%. Just recently, Manitoba, which their credits were about to expire, they had a test uh, for about eight years, they tested it. They're making theirs permanent. They've got a 30% provincial credit for mining. It no longer is temporary. It's forever. And Saskatchewan uh, surprised us all by uh, taking a 10% provincial credit and moving it to 30%, again, just for critical minerals. Quebec has been special in that they've only taxed a half capital gain, and they've always added this 25% provincial credit. Quebec, for many jurisdictions in the world, is the number one jurisdiction to mine in over all the whole world, more than different provinces of Canada and different jurisdictions in Australia and, of course, Europe and Africa. So that's what you're hearing. And the Canadian government is behind this 100%. And, and I think just to, to clarify, you were explaining to me earlier that you do more than help high net worth individuals looking for flow through opportunities. You also help corporations. Is that correct? Yeah, wherever a Canadian corporation or Canadian individual has income taxes to pay, we can help. And there's bigger income taxes we find to be paid in holding companies and operating companies than there are for individuals. Uh, individuals would try to draw a smaller salary to meet their, their lifestyle, but they could keep massive retained earnings and have big, big tax to pay. And there is no alternate minimum tax in holding companies and operating companies. So if you've got tax to pay, uh, we can definitely help on the individual side and the corporate side. So if you have income taxes to pay. Remember, Peter Nicholson said, contact WCPD.com and or call him at the following number. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks for the time, Tracy.